with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we contemplate the scriptures today, it's about vocations. This is the beginning of vocation week, awareness week. Bishop has asked the priest to tell you our vocation story. I'm not comfortable doing that because it would take too long. (laughs) So do you have a few hours? You're comfortable, sit back, relax. No. I'll cut it pretty briefly. Does anyone know what the word altruism is? Any young person in the community know what altruism is? I didn't think so. An altruistic person is a person who is not going to do any work or efforts for money, but to do it out of love of the other person so that they can gain forward their existence in goodness. I was taught by my parents to be altruistic, not to look for money, but when I make money in my job, to use it properly where it needs to be. So our vocation, as we understand, is literally single life, married life, religious life, slash priesthood. In other words, there's three ways of living, loving God and neighbor. Single life, married life, religious life slash priesthood. How did I become a priest? Well, it was God's work and my work with God. When I was in fifth grade, the priest said to the entire community, please make sure you're telling your children it's not a shame to be a priest. It's actually a good thing. And to encourage that. So my brother and I, I'm one of triplets, but I have other older brothers, but my brother who's a triplet, my brother Paul, and I went to our bedroom after mass and my father came in and he said, boys, if you'd ever consider being a priest, that would be good. And we just looked at each other and laughed. (laughs) But it was the first time that I was given permission 
to even think about it. And I did think about it. And I thought about it so much that I kept looking at the priests and saying, my gosh, they're brilliant. They know everything. I could never do that. So I never thought myself intelligent enough. So it took a while, but I always loved the faith. I always loved learning about our Catholic traditions and what makes us the unique lovers that we are. So I ended up teaching catechetical or confraternity of Catholic doctrine, CCD, uh, religious ed, you call it today. I was in 12th grade teaching 5th grade. I was the only high school student doing that in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. The priest saw something in me and he said, I think you can do it. So then I went to high school, or finished you know, going through high school and, uh, and college and said, I think I want to teach. I taught in Catholic school and then I taught in public school. I gained my master's, but never gave it a thought to go into the priesthood until I finished my first year in public school and said, there's got to be something else. <laughs> now I will say, the public school I taught in was excellent. And you would have thought you were in a Catholic school. I'm serious. Very well run. Beautiful people. And of different denominations, but awesome, awesome, awesome. They only cared about excelling and doing wonderful and being able to lift those up who are struggling. But I kept saying, there's got to be something else. So I applied for seminary. I stayed there for two years. I was anxious about visiting those in the hospital. I would get anxious enough that I would pass out. So I didn't think that going to a hospital and passing out would be beneficial for the person I was visiting. <laughs> so I said, I think I need to work on that. So God granted me a friend who was 91, and when she was 94, she passed away. I took care of her from 91 to 94. And I learned how to deal with hospitals and doctors and surgeries, because she had lots of them. And we overcame. She was not Catholic, but she was curious. And then she was afraid that I would leave. And I said, don't worry, Ruth. I'm here for you. She had broken her pelvis. I'm here for you. Eventually, she broke her hip. I'm here for you. She had a bathroom upstairs. She lived downstairs. Get my point? And we had to feed her. She became like my grandmother. I didn't know. She taught me what I can be. She didn't tell me, but what I was doing was what I was becoming a person who cared for someone, not worrying about what I was going to get out of it, but just that her dignity, because she had no family left, that she could be lifted up and loved. That's all. So when she passed, I had a funeral for her. It was difficult. And after the funeral, I said, I think it's time to go back to seminary. I went into seminary for two more years, two and a half. And I got very ill and had to leave. Then I worked as a teacher again 
and then eventually in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Trying to get back in the seminary was difficult. So, after the third reapplication to St. Charles in Philadelphia, they kept saying, it's too soon, it's too soon, because of my illness. And I said, well, I'm not getting any younger. So maybe it's not priesthood, it's marriage. So I said, I'm done with this. So I drove to the Archdiocese and Office Center where I worked, and I said, Monsignor, I quit. And he went, what? You're going back to, to seminary? No. What do you mean, no? No, they're not taking me back. So apparently, I'm not supposed to be a priest. I'm okay with that. I'm going back to teaching. Literally, within 24 hours, I got a phone call from the school district that I used to work in. And then they wanted me to apply. There was only one position available. Library science. I don't have that. <laughs> Couldn't get in. But I had called a friend because when I turned my computer on after three years and I don't have internet and the computer said print job incomplete would you like to print? Yes. And it prints up three sheets and it says literally given to you a reason to know by God. And I'm like what? So I called my friend who last used my computer and I said, do you have a chapter or something in the paper you wrote that says this? And he says, no. And I said, oh, why, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm typing up my, my resume for teaching. You're supposed to be a priest. No. <laughs> You're supposed to be a priest. No. I need to go. Goodbye. Type up my resume and then I go and I, literally the following day was the interview. And I come back and they called me the following day and said the school board won't take you because we, they don't want to do the emergency certificate. I said, okay. Then my friend called. So yes, God uses the telephone. <laughs> and he says, John, you're supposed to be a priest. Go down to Wilmington. I said, what? Wilmington? Where's that? <laughs> 45 minutes south, John, <laughs> from Philadelphia. I said, well, if you want me to go, you can take me. So, long and the short of it, here I am. <laughs> Have I struggled? Have I struggled? Yes. Is it worth the struggle? Yes. Just look at your marriages. Have you struggled? Yes. Was it worth it? Yes. Single life? Having some difficulties? Yes. Is it worth it? Yes. See, all of our vocations technically are the same. To love God with our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole soul, and our neighbors ourselves. But how best to do it within the church? Single life? Married life? religious life slash priesthood. No one of those vocations to be, in my opinion, is greater than the other. Jesus Christ is the priest. I'm his representative. I don't know all things. And when I learned that I didn't have to know all things, it was easier to go in the seminary. I'm not the brightest bulb in the chandelier, but I know the light of Christ comes out of me. And I would do it all over again, even all that I suffered. I won't share you that part, but it's a good thing because we're together, aren't we? And aren't we here to love one another yes. as Christ has loved us? Yes. So I want you to think about yourselves individually. If you're a young person, 
Think about who are you? What do you want to be when you grow up? Do you want to be single? Perhaps you want to raise a family, be married? Perhaps you want to go into a religious order, a community of people who live for the same charism or purpose, or priesthood for the gentleman. If you would encourage one another to live out the dignity of a vocation, of single life, married life, religious life slash priesthood, if you know of someone that you think would be a great priest, would you let them know it's a good thing to consider and to encourage that instead of discouraging? Encourage because I'm married to the church. I have lots of children and I never had to change a diaper. Not bad, huh? In all seriousness. In our bulletin this week, third page, I think, one, two, yes, third page, called by name. If you think of a gentleman or a young lady, who you think should be considering religious life or a gentleman in priesthood, put their name down. Cut it out and put it in the collection basket next week. We also have cards on the table if you'd like to just do it from the card. We also have some at each of the entrances of the side doors. My brothers and sisters, the long and the short of it is this. It's not about the money one makes. My, uh, my fan finance counsel can tell you that about me. <laughs> but what it is about is about how much grace you can see that's alive. To do the sacraments for me is the greatest honor and privilege to baptize a child and an adult, to participate in confirmation, to hear a confession, to enable a marriage to be informed in their decision, to anoint the sick, and to supply last rites for the dying, to aid the funeral, burial. What an honor and privilege that no money can make up for. As you and I live our Catholic identity and our Catholic faith, I thank you for choosing me and to choose those who will come after me to be your priests. Because it's not my choice. It's no one man's choice. It's the choice of the church to call the person forward to serve. Altruistically, I came to serve, not to be served, to live for the sake that my father taught me with my mother. Do good, John. The people need you. Go back to them. Amen. Outro.